What's up and welcome back to the Scuffed Ass Podcast for episode number 197. This is definitely not the second time I've had to do that intro today. For sure no. For sure no. Don't listen to Wonder. He's in camo. You can't see his nipples. They're right there. Oh, they're a little off kilter, huh? Yeah. That's tough. I don't even hardly have nipples, so they're hard to find. You gotta, yeah. Um, we're we're gonna move away from nipple talk. Uh, that's a part of TikTok that I'm sure wonders on because that's all he watches. That's untrue. If it, it pops up on my feed, is not because I've been watching that. It just that's a lie. Pop, well, the reason why I know this is because it pops up on my girlfriend's, and she doesn't like that stuff, so. It's just TikTok. It's taking over. Doesn't TikTok. pop up on mine, so you must be liking something. No, it's just because we don't really I have like been anything. getting a fuck ton of me undies ads. <laughs> That's weird. You know, so it's this company that sells underwear, obviously. Fucking weird though. I mean they're just ads, so they just run wherever they run and that's not really a thing, right. but like they're wild. But I cannot say that I have seen any of those. No MeUndies ads for you? No, none of those. No. None of those. Weird. Wonder's not a MeUndies guy. Apparently. No. No. Nope. Don't even know what it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Since you're listening to this on Thanksgiving Day, or at least that's when it releases, Happy Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving to our American friends. Yeah. And happy Thursday to everybody else because none of you care. Uh, <laughs> True. Yeah, I don't know. Let's. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the idea of Thanksgiving. I like like the holiday itself, but like why it exists is fun. Not really, but I don't know. We were doing a lot of shitty things. People were being shitty. And we mm-hmm. have a holiday because people were shitty. Still not as bad as Columbus Day. That should not be a thing. I I don't I don't like that. Well, I get food out of it, so I wasn't a part not of Columbus Day. A long time ago. Not Columbus no, Day. Not Columbus Day. Thanksgiving. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's something. Um. I don't know. I'm I'm stalling for time. I don't know why. Because we have to somehow make this an hour, and I don't know what I'm supposed to talk about. Because I mean, I've been screaming in my own head all day. Oh. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, you went to an NFL game and got to see your Dude, team play. Ridiculous. However rough it may have been, it may have been. Dude, it's it's been more rough listening to the fucking idiot Vikings fans on Twitter. Like, dude, th- I I now see why we were voted as the dumbest fan base in football because everyone I've interacted with on Twitter about that game is a fucking moron. Yeah. That game's entirely just... Kevin O'Connell's fault. Nobody else. You can't blame Flores and the defense for playing prevent and just getting picked apart by screens for an entire two drives basically the entire game all the that denver did was screens yeah they had one deep pass to sutton every other pass went behind the line of scrimmage like they were not throwing deep ever and all we wanted to do was just we'll let them have it eight yards every fucking play it's like we, well we can't really blame flores for that yeah we can Yeah, I want to keep Flores around. He's a great defensive coordinator. That does not bar us from criticizing him when he is not calling great plays. And everybody just goes, well, the offense was just too conservative. That's the real problem. What what do you mean? Because they were running the ball well, so too many handoffs? Well, yeah, Alexander Madison sucks. Because, you know, he fumbles all the time. It's like he has two fumbles this year. I was about to say he has less fumbles than pretty any pretty much any running back in the league. Yeah, he's got two fumbles on the year. This one and the one in Philly. No, that one got called back. I think he only has one other fumble. 
Um, so, yeah, he has two fumbles. And he had 18 carries for 81 yards. That's four and a half yards a carry. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's not awful. You do not bench a guy for four and a half yards a carry. Yeah, Ty Chandler had right. 10 carries for 73 yards. Let's also remember about 40 of those yards came on a fake punt. Mm-hmm. Not really, not really a fair comparison. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You fucking yeah. weirdos. But when your running backs are averaging four and a half yards and 7.3 yards, you're going to hand the ball off. Also, mm-hmm. it's cold and rainy, and the Broncos' <laughs> secondary is, like, the best part of their team. So, mm-hmm. like, they can't stop the run. They're bad, or they're really good against the pass. So what do you do? You run the fucking football, you morons. I, I, don't, I, don't, see the, I don't see the thing here. But, right. like, y- y- you know, uh, we have the whole... Oh, sorry, go ahead. All I was going to say is I definitely have no room to talk shit because my team got their ass kicked by... Well, they didn't get their ass kicked, but... Lost the same way ours did? Lost exactly the same way. Literally, same fucking (laughs) player at the end of the game, too. (laughs) Fucking 14. I know. Oh, everything you're saying right now is almost like it just happened last week. Oh, he doinked the kick in. I've seen that. doinked in. seen that. Also, one of my players got a touchdown, Swift. Yeah, watching Philly and Kansas City right now. And, uh, God, who is Philly's kicker? Jake Elliott doinked it in. Lucky. Um, there was a lot of purple in Denver. It was pretty funny. Yeah. But it was loud, just like a lot. But also, I was asked multiple times, like, how'd this compare to Minnesota? It didn't. Because when they were as loud as they could be, you could ask me, how does this compare to Minnesota? And I could hear you. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. You would be screaming at the top of your lungs in Minnesota next to me. I'm not hearing you. Mm -hmm. It's just noise. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. I'm just happy the Bills were able to score some points. Yeah, it was against the Jets. Doesn't count. Well, I, I mean... The Jets' offense gave you most of those points. You didn't even have well, to try. But, I mean, Josh Allen also was able to connect for some points, too, which was good to see because that seems to be, like, the hardest part ever in the last couple of weeks. So, um, seeing clean plays and, and, you know, only had one interception. <laughs> I didn't actually get to watch the game, but I know he had an interception. Josh so Dobbs had an interception this week on... The reason why Ty Chandler doesn't get 100% of the snaps Mm -hmm. because he needed to pick up a blitz and got bodied harder than a toddler. Like, bro got it. He wasn't even there. Like, (laughs) and people are like, what does Ty Chandler have to do to get all the snaps away from Mm -hmm. Madison? Learn how to be used in pass pro. And then I'd hear people go, well, just bring in CJ Ham only for pass pro. And it's like, that's a great way to tell the other team exactly what the fuck you're doing. No Madison shit. will continue to get snaps, but like actual runs, like he will get handed the ball and get snaps and pass pro because he's good enough at both. Is he mm-hmm. Dalvin Cook in his prime? No. No. But we didn't expect him to be and we didn't need him to be, and it's been fine. The fumble killed us. So did the interception. So did the Josh Dobbs fumble earlier in the game that shouldn't have been a fumble because that was an illegal hit that was targeting. That was helmet to helmet. That was get Kareem Jackson the fuck off my football field. That dude should (laughs) never be allowed to play again. I'm sorry, you're 36, and this is your second suspension on the year. It'll be your sixth total fine this year Mm -hmm. for the same thing he's 36 he's obviously not gonna learn or even try to not have this be a problem deuces yeah you gone you done yeah i was about to say i'd rather take my risks with a you know a young player yeah right instead of get penalties all the time by this guy you know yeah like jail skinner's good bro let him let him cook all right like i'm done it get Kareem Jackson the fuck out of this league. No room for guys like him. But I mean, let's be honest. The whole, ugh. I mean, Alex Singleton had a play later and there were a few others. 
I mean, a Sean Payton team leading their heads and playing dirty. Does that surprise any human to ever exist? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. Like we played good enough to win, but I don't know the, the fumble by Madison. And then there was a, another dropped pass by him later in the game that really just kind of, I don't know. It sucks to lose a game where you were in control the entire game. Right. That's just tough. Yeah. But also like, I, whatever we're, we're a team playing with a backup quarterback who's been on the roster for three weeks without our best wide receiver. Like we've been playing with house money. Anyways, we lost to a good football team. Fucking whatever. I'm sorry. Right. We get, what the Bears, Raiders, Bears, Packers, Lions, and this is our next like eight. Like, we don't face another really good team. And I'm sorry to spoil it, folks. The Lions are not a really good team. You know what the Lions are? Last year's Vikings. So a fraudulent <laughs> football team. Well, look at the two so they have faced three total teams with a record over five hundred. The Chiefs, mm -hmm. yeah, they beat them. Without Kelsey without Chris Jones, and when Mahomes receivers played the worst game any receiver group has ever played. And you won by less than a touchdown. Congrats. Then you play Seattle, lose in overtime. And Seattle is barely an over 500 team, and as a team everybody looks at right now is like not a real like threat to anything. Then you play the best team in the AFC right now, the Baltimore Ravens, and get shit housed yesterday mm -hmm. you were down two touchdowns with four minutes left to the chicago bears who <laughs> choked it because their coach is the dumbest motherfucker to ever live like that's that's it uh and tyler scott's a useless piece of garbage that throw by fields was so good but his receiver so it was like the game winning shot he threw like a 50 yard pass down the field but Tyler Scott started looking for it 13 yards too early, slowed down, then tried to speed up and just missed it. If he would have just ran and caught it, it's a touchdown. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, Fields is going to get blamed for playing a perfect game and losing because the Bears are just an incompetent organization. It's <laughs> tough. But the yeah. Lions, Jared Goff played awful. You have three interceptions. Against the Bears. Garbage. Yeah. That's what made me, like, I was like, ah, oh, God, we got beat by the, you know, Denver Broncos. And I thought to myself, we This is what Denver was fumbles. supposed to be? <laughs> yeah. But we also had two fumbles and two interceptions. That's four turnovers there. And then we also had, like, fucking nine fucking turnovers where you just, you know, went, all, you know, fourth down and had to putt it away. And still had a shot to win the game. And also, motherfucker misses the first field goal. And somehow there's 12 guys on the goddamn field. So he gets the re-kick and makes the second one. Yep. Isn't that your favorite? Dude, I I was literally... Uh, yeah, first thing I did was, after that game, was text him. And um, <laughs> I, was, I was livid pissed. Like, I was about ready to have an aneurysm. Oh, that's how pissed I was. <laughs> I was like, dude, it's the same people every time. How the fuck do we end up with 12 people on the field? Nobody's been injured as far as that goes, but we somehow have an extra player on the field. How? Why? How? <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it, this is the shit that makes me go, it's rigged. But I know it's not, but I want to say it's rigged because like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, right. I get it. But like no, nah, it it was rough and but like the Broncos are a good team. I'm not that worried about it. The Vikings are sure listed as like the seventh seed right now, but we're still two and a half games up on literally everybody else. Yeah. With a pretty easy schedule, like whatever. Playoffs are basically a guarantee at this point. All I'm must be nice to have an easy schedule. Your schedule's not that hard. The Bills just suck. You just it's not? No, not really. Like you're you're I acting mean, like you get the Patriots and the Jets twice. That's four wins if you aren't awful at your job. 
but you lost to the Jets for some reason in week one because bad team. You played the Commanders and the Raiders, both easy teams. You lost to the Jaguars, who are good but not great. You beat the Dolphins, who are really good. You had the Giants, bro. You got the Patriots. You had the Buccaneers. Who do you got left? You got... Now, it is tough to end it. Eagles, Chiefs, Maybe Bills. That's what I'm thinking of. Eagles, Chiefs, Bills is tough. Then you got Chargers, Patriots, Dolphins. Those last three should be winnable if you're a good team. But the Bills right. aren't a good team. Right. At this point. Well, the thing is, is if they play well, I think they can beat any team. It's if I'm just a Bills fucking... fan, I want to lose the next six. That sounds really bad, and I know not wanting to lose is... But, like, if you're looking at it from, like, the outside perspective of this team needs change and to be better, Mm -hmm. winning these next six, making the playoffs, losing in the divisional, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. You're just going to run it back as the same roster and be mediocre and not good enough again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you kind of need a, a reset year. Right. But, I mean, also... If you have a reset year, I still don't know if that would be enough to. You'd have to find the right coach. I don't know who that is. Yeah, so that's the issue. I mean, maybe you should have fired McDermott and kept Dable. Maybe Josh Allen wasn't very happy about letting Dable go. Well, it wasn't really up to him because what? Right. If I'm Dable, I'm not staying as OC when somebody wants me as a head coach. Like, sorry, Uh, I'll go over there. Right, Unless you're going to pay me way more money, and you know the bills aren't doing that, so. Right, but but Josh Allen, his his comments were, you know, it, maybe if we played better football, we'd still have him, you know, because Josh fair. Allen liked him. So that's fair. Because he's he's a good guy, I guess. So. That's fair. But so Josh Allen kind of blames himself a little bit for having him uh, lead I, the team. I'm also going to have to be really rude this week on run the north oh boy jack campbell the linebacker the lions drafted in the first round you know Uh he's he's generational at linebacker he's so much better than everybody else uh got benched for Derek barnes yesterday ivan pace is still one of the top rated linebackers in all of football as a rookie it's almost like just because you look generational at Iowa against non-real teams doesn't mean you're uh, a great player. I was about to say, you kind of have to watch it's some also college ball. It's almost like <laughs> the big knock. He's not really that good in pass pro. It's almost like in the NFL, you got to be good at defending the pass, and he's not. So right. kind of useless. Well, about, Though Ivan Pace linebacker. got picked on yesterday by... Cortland Sutton, but Cortland Sutton's been picking on the entire league, so whatever. Mm-hmm. That's true. I say Cortland Sutton would be a good, good guy to have on the Bills. Five <laughs> ten uh, linebacker against six four wide receiver one. We know how that ends every time, so whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. I I swear sometimes people don't watch college football. You know. They no, just look I mean, at no, and... Campbell was good, but, like, just watching games, Ivan Pace was, like, you watched Cincinnati, and he was the guy you saw every play. He was mm-hmm. doing something. Eh, fucking dumb. Uh, we've also found the best Dan Snyder was the worst owner in NFL history stat possible. In 2013, the Washington football team had these men as assistant coaches. Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, Mike McDaniel, Kevin O'Connell, and Bobby Slowick. Bobby Slowick is the DC or the OC for the Houston Texans right now. You know that team where a rookie quarterback is like in MVP conversations? Okay. Yeah, his OC was on that coaching staff you know kevin o'connell coach of the year candidate on that coaching staff sean McVay, super bowl winner on that coaching staff kyle shanahan looked at as like the best coach in the league on that staff none of them even got looked at to be a head coach for washington and that's how you know your owner's incompetent 
Yeah, right. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Oh man. Well, that was an interception. Uh, I'm not gonna say nothing. An interception. Yes. Nice. I don't think it was. And then it was stripped again and taken. Oh. Um, oh. They didn't blow it dead, but they're, they're they didn't gonna, blow it dead. They're gonna pretend they're blowing it dead though, because. Chiefs, blow it dead. If you're gonna blow it dead, blow it dead. Don't fucking no. Fuck oh, you, well. Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, forward progress. I guess right. That was a pick, though. Yeah. Wow. Good Ooh. play by Sneed. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think I have Sneed in their league. Nice. But, um... AJ Brown never touched him while he was down, so I don't... I don't know. So, That's... I don't know. Let's see what... Let's see what the Twitter sphere is saying. Maybe nothing. <laughs> Probably nothing yet, but... Wow. Chief Superstar tight end Travis Kelsey. Uh, who is this... Okay, this is from the Wall Street Journal, actually. I didn't trust the account I was reading it from. Mm -hmm. um, it says he thinks about retirement more than anyone could ever, ever imagine. I was going to say even, but that wasn't the right word. Kelsey mentions the lingering pain from injuries along with multiple surgeries he's had to go undergo during his long career. So, the only thing I've never really been open about, the discomfort, the pain, the lingering injuries, the 10 surgeries mm -hmm. I've had that I still feel every single day. Huh? I wonder if he'll retire the minute his brother does. Like when Jason Probably. hangs it up, Trav just goes, all right. Yeah, peace. I'm good. We're going to go chill. Dude, I'm this... I got my ass kicked this week in your league. You deserve it. And he had two players that had zero points and still he's at 223 points right now. Jeez. And, uh, well, having Joe Burrow get hurt early, that didn't help. And then Stefan Diggs only getting six points, that didn't help. And then. Oh, man. The best person on my defense is uh, Logan Wilson with 19 points. Oh, yeah, well, but people... Trevor Lawrence for 32 points, or Brock Purdy with 26 points, or Fred Warner with 34 points, but that wouldn't have made too much of a difference. Nah. Yeah, I would have got beat no matter who I played. Because he had fucking defensive player with 40 points, 20 points... 28 points. And an offensive player, Warren for Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, who had 40 points. My like, God. Everybody does well. I'm doing him good in Stevens League, though. Whoa. Stevens League. Yeah. Yay. It's the only league I'm doing good in, other than my one ESPN one. I'm not doing bad in your ESPN either. Um, yikes, dude. Oh, poor Justin Herbert. I feel so bad. Yesterday in Green Bay, he played basically a perfect... Oh, no! A.J. Brown's leg did touch his leg. Oh, yeah. oh. But no, Herbert played basically a perfect game in Green Bay and just got screwed for it. <laughs> uh, and then today, Ian Rappaport's showing how biased and piece of shitty he might actually be, which is sad. I always thought Rappaport was good. But he was, like, on air talking about how Brandon Staley and the defense has never been the problem, and it's always been an offensive issue. And somebody found out that uh, Staley and Rappaport have the same, like, manager slash booking agent. <laughs> so, uh... Rapport oh. just might be kind to Staley. No, Herbert played basically a perfect game. I think he had like 
Let me let me look at this because if I recall correctly, he had one poorly thrown ball. Even though it looks so much worse. Because mm -hmm. so he finished 21 of 36, but you can go back and watch at least 10 of those passes just be dropped. <laughs> Keenan Allen was dropping passes. Quentin Johnston. Austin Eckler looks older than dirt at this point. He right, had what yeah. should have been a house call, but he looked like he was running slower than me. Just fucking chugging. Bro, You're nobody nobody's moved that slow at Lambeau Field since Eddie Lacy after he finished eating an entire McDonald's. <laughs> Eddie the downfall of Eddie Lacy was wild. A running back coming into camp weighing over three hundred is something. Rough. Bro just that really couldn't like put down the cheeseburgers. <laughs> that sounds like a midlife crisis, man. I'll send you a picture of Eddie Lacey in a... What the fuck just happened? My monitor went black? Oh. That was wild. Good, Tonic, and good. Eddie Lacey out here catching strays in the middle of a podcast, but it's fine. How's your PC doing so far? It's been pretty good. I'm ready to get some new monitors, but them's be expensive. That's true. Here you go. Yeah. Here's a here's a training camp picture of Eddie Lacey. I wouldn't want that guy to step on me. That's for sure. It was on Twitter. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find him in college. Like, so you can see, like, I don't even know where he went to. College. You look like a lineman, man. Yeah. Just so you can like see what happened. To Edward Lacey. Actually, no, I can find him as a rookie in Green Bay. That way you can really, uh. Really see the, the change? Yeah, it's like same uniform, same stuff. Here you go. The same dude. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god <laughs> yeah he uh packed it on a little bit and that's only Bro. like a year or two apart you know what it reminds me of you ever seen dodgeball <laughs> <laughs> the guy gets his ass kicked and then he goes and starts eating oh kelsey always kelsey man yeah I need him to not score points. That'd be great. But I know he's like the only reliable person for home home, so he's going to end up beating me. Eh. Why are you crying? It's scary. You're scary. Your mm, face. Cause this guy only needs 12 points to beat me, and, and my, he's got Travis Kelsey. So. Yeah, you're probably fucked. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It, it seems to think that I'm not fucked. It only has him as a five percent chance of winning, but um, dude, I'd be so pissed. So, like last week, sometime I don't remember if it was before or after we recorded the podcast. Did we talk about Ninja's Discord getting leaked? Mm -mm. So I, I so. show speed. He's a shitty streamer and YouTuber. He's a fucking moron. And I don't know why anybody watches him. He's has a history of leaking people's phone numbers and addresses and discords because I, I always thought it had to have been like an accident because he's stupid. But now I just think he's a fucking moron and does it on purpose. Cause like, ha ha funny. Yeah. I think but he mentioned it. I don't he know wanted to play called. Fortnite with Ninja, so he like joined in, but he also leaked the Discord. So like hundreds of people joined into the Discord in the call. There was no way for Ninja to recover it. So he had to delete this Discord that he's been using for like 13 years. It had like all the OGs of streaming. It had like that was the server that like Drake and Juju Smith Schuster and Travis Scott were all in that one. You remember the night where Fortnite became mainstream because mm -hmm. like everybody was like, yo, Drake's playing Fortnite with Ninja. This is incredible. Uh, yeah, that discord got nuked because some morons a fucking moron. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. 
<laughs> um, like feels bad. Uh, the internet, man. I'm, dude. So people are going nuts lately, and it's been pissing me the fuck off. So Pokimane, a streamer, mm-hmm. she, uh, yeah, I was telling you about how she was doing something, like releasing some product, and like. I, no, I did tell you about this because I thought it was going to be like a hair care product. So I was trying mm-hmm. to get her to send yeah. me a sample. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. Mahomes threw a pick. Mm hmm. Because Mahomes is doo doo. He bad. Yeah. Josh Dobbs, better. The better He's number just 15. To keep up with Alan, you know? Yeah. Josh Dobbs is the best number 15 in the league. I don't want to hear it. Give me the mm-hmm. pastronaut. <laughs> but, um,. So it turned out she was releasing, like, some cookies. They're, like, gluten-free fucking whatever. They're cookies, right? Mm-hmm. People are pissed because they're, like, $28 for a pack of four. So it's, like, four little baggies of cookies that mm-hmm. have seven cookies apiece in them or something. Like, so, there's 28 total cookies that's, like, whatever. Seven dollars a bag. A no, it's like seven. Yeah, basically, for you know, mm-hmm. gluten free cookies. I don't. I obviously these fucking idiots talking about it don't really know much, mm-hmm. because I don't know if you've ever tried to buy gluten free anything. It's more expensive. Not yeah. cheap. Not so, cheap. A dollar a cookie is not bad. No, and so it's that, and like, so. <laughs> She released them. People were mad about price. And then people found this brand that had made a similar cookie. And so she did a live stream basically talking about how, yeah, so the people who are like actually manufacturing the cookies manufactured a similar cookie for these people that no longer make them. Mm -hmm. And because there were some issues with it, yeah, at the time they were cheap or whatever. We reworked the recipe, changed some things, added like vitamin D so it... Makes it a real gamer snack because gamers don't see the sun. Uh, <laughs> and like, whatever. And people are like, oh, so you're just stealing somebody else's product and charging it at a huge markup and like just a useless piece of shit. And so people have been harassing her for a week about it, right? So on a stream, somebody was harassing her and she did the whole like clap back thing and was like, you know, whatever. The snack's a snack. If you don't have the money, don't buy it. But you're, But you complaining about it like this, what are you? Just a whole bunch of broke boys? So that's been clipped, and now the whole world is saying she's calling her entire audience broke boys and being, like, super misogynistic and shitty and just taking advantage of people. And it's like, dude, what the fuck? Have you heard how any streamer talks to the trolls (laughs) in their chat? Should I start clipping when we yell at the one person and be like, yo, this is what she I think about my whole community, right? Or are the people posting this just, like, hating on her because woman successful and angry? I don't care. You think seven bucks a bag is overpriced for the cookies? Mm -hmm. Don't fucking buy them. Who cares? Why are we making this a big deal? And now people are like, why are you putting so much energy into hating on Pokimane or defending her? And it's like, my thing is just, like, dumb people annoy me. Instead of, like, talking about the whole Gaza thing and it's like because not everybody needs to have an opinion on everything my opinion on that is like everything's bad killing people's bad let's not do any of it how about that right which that also is apparently a bad answer so mm-hmm. no you have to choose a side i'm gonna apparently. get hate on this it's cool i i, I just i that's why we no longer talk any sort of politics on this show or any other show because like it's dumb i'm sorry Mm -hmm. i i I don't having a platform does not mean you need to speak on every issue Mm -hmm. like actually and me choosing to speak on an issue in the streaming space compared to a political or global issue are very Mm -hmm. different i'm a streamer i'm in the streaming space of course i'm Mm going to speak on that i'm not going to speak on things where i'm not a hundred percent informed and like whatever. Yeah. I it's ridiculous and it hurts my head. And right. yeah. So 
you want my thoughts? I don't know. Check the tweets I like from all my friends. The the old that's that's my way of tweeting about it. I don't really want to. I'm I'm not deep diving into it. That's not right. me. So I'm just gonna agree with the people I agree with, and you'll see that. And there you go. That's not a topic I'm gonna cover. We've gone political on this podcast before. I don't want to do it again. Right, it never leads to those aren't fun episodes, it. and there's no fucking point, and they can't be fun to listen to. Cool, you want a political debate? Go fucking watch literally anybody that does that. I'm right. here to try yeah, to be ha ha. F- like, I'm just here to make content and be ha ha funny. I, I no longer care. I don't have the mental fortitude to care. Because what? <sighs> I, I've said this a lot. What does any of us talking about it do? Right. Has that ever fixed anything ever? That's such a cynical view. But right. like, it doesn't do anything. And me sharing my opinion doesn't do anything. And I'm done. Well, and what annoys me is people want to hear, they'll pop in, what's your opinion on this topic? Just so they can come up with something to argue with you about that yeah. really doesn't fucking get anywhere and you know because they already believe in what they believe in you already believe in what you believe in you're not going to get anywhere well and i mean most people aren't willing to sit there and listen to like what's going right. on and actually have an adult conversation about especially politics i see it it's terrible in politics usually you try to have a conversation and if you defer in p- opinions you know usually one side ends up not having factual information or something like that the next thing you know they just start throwing names at you and calling you and throwing insults and it's like dude just have a grown up ass conversation if you get if you start losing the conversation but even now like I don't want to talk just, politics you. with you in person like I just don't care <laughs> there's no point right. why do we care so much Right, it's not like we're gonna do anything about I, it. I I can't wait for this to get clipped by somebody who's never watched the show before to like try to shout me out on the internet as a horrible person. And I'm just gonna my response is just gonna be like, "You're right, I'm a piece of shit. Thanks. I don't care anymore." <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a terrible person for staying out of our shitty politics. Yeah. Right, I'm just staying out of all of it. I, I'm just done. I'll yell about the things I know about and not about the things I don't. And I don't know if I don't just talk about it, then it that's it. I'm not going to speak on what I'm not entirely informed on. Mm-hmm. You know, right. Call me a shit human. Right. If that's what it makes me, you know what? I am wow. entirely informed on. Hmm. Mac Jones still has the arm strength of a toddler. <laughs> Patriots didn't even play this week, but Mac Jones got to catch some strays. Fucking hate that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, bro, ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, uh, I did. So, oh, that's yeah. I was the guy sitting behind me last night at the at the Broncos game. Fucking annoying. <laughs> so like 50, 60 year old white dude. Every play was bitching about some fucking the people in our row would stand up to let people through and you could just hear him, you know, can't even wait until at least the possessions over a quarter or something. People would stand up because they're excited and like, oh, come on, why are we standing? It's like, dude, fuck off. Have you never been to a game before? What the fuck? (laughs) Like, it's also one of those things. I paid for a ticket to view it from my seat. Yeah, we all paid for tickets too. And you know what? When it got hard to see, what did we do? We fucking stood up Mm -hmm. so we could see. Even when it wasn't hard to see. If I want to fucking stand up, I'll stand up. If you're behind me, you can figure it the fuck out. I I don't. (laughs) Right. Shit, I'm not afraid to ask the tall guy to put me on his shoulders. Right? Like, just, I'm, whatever. I'm standing up. <clears throat> but then a penalty got called in, on the Vikings late in the game that, no. And I was, like, shaking my head. I was like, there's no fucking way, bro. <laughs> and he goes, 
don't shake your head. And I'm like, dude, you've been bitching all game. Shut the fuck up. I'm, I'm done. You Just shut up over there. Jesus Christ. And it's then good I was, thing I wasn't there because I had to turn and went like, dude, just shut your mouth. Right, dude. And, and then, then like, you want to know? The like, fucking grandpa, sit down. Broncos win. The one Broncos fan is walking by, like mocking the skull chant. And I was, I just went, yeah, cool. Celebrate now. You can do the skull chant today. We'll be doing it at the playoffs while you guys are watching from home. And he just gave me this like dirty ass look, like you fucker. I was like, I'm sorry. That's true. If you don't start the shit if you can't take it. Because I will clap back every time. Right. The one guy, I was wearing my Justin Jefferson jersey. One guy's like, team shop's right over there. Go get yourself a Cortland Sutton jersey, a real wide receiver. And I was like, I'll stick with the one who actually catches the ball, thanks. Because Sutton had three drops at the beginning of the game. I was like, I'll stick with the receiver who's like consistent and can catch, thanks. Everybody's so oh, mad. The receiver that was like literally the MVP last year. Yeah, give me literally the best football player in the world. Thank you. Yeah, there uh, you go. <laughs> you're not even sure if Cortland Sutton's the best receiver on your team. You sure don't like to throw to him very often. All right. Oh. I'm also mad because the reporters in New York are way too serious. Reporter asked Brian Dable, how much did Tommy DeVito grow today? I think he's the same height. Nobody <laughs> laughed. I was like, I would have left. I'm done talking to the media. You're not going to give that even a chuckle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how much did Tommy DeVito grow today? I think he's the same height. <laughs> oh. Fucking ridiculous. Dude, if the fucking it Italian guy who lives with his mother becomes the star quarterback of the Giants. That is the greatest thing of all time. The Italian as the star quarterback in New York. That is the most New York thing of all time. I, I want it. I think it would be so fucking... That's how bad our economy is. Somebody making millions of dollars. Okay, that's not mother. fair. <laughs> He's a, like a seventh round draft pick. He's not making millions of dollars. Brock Purdy is making 800 grand. So people are like, because he has a roommate, because, you know, San Francisco's not a cheap place to live. So he has mm -hmm. an apartment with a roommate, and people are like, oh, the NFL player can't afford a place to himself. No, he's a seventh-round draft pick. That's not how this works. Not everybody makes Mahomes money. Jesus. But Brain that, dead. That's my point. That's the point I was getting at. Oh. Is our yeah, Our economy sucks, but I mean, and, even oh. the fact that five hundred grand's not enough to like do your mm -hmm. own thing—that's tough. But mm -hmm. ugh, it's wild. But yeah, my whole Lions take started yesterday because I saw somebody another close win for the Lions. You know, that's really the sign of good teams is being able to find a way to get it done. And I'm just like, so old the phone. So the Vikings were frauds last year for winning in close games and losing to good teams. This year, the Lions are a good team because they find ways to win close and lose to good teams. Make it make sense, please. And the answer is just, well, the Lions are the lovable losers. And it's like, I think the Vikings have more lovable players than the Lions do seeing as everybody talks about JJ and now everybody loves Josh Dobbs, like whole nother level. Right. There. If anybody's like frauds right now, it'd be the bills. Like nope, the lions they, they are frauds. Have, like, but like if the bills have, they either have to blow the team out or they're going to lose. If it's a close game, the bills lose. If it goes in overtime, bills lose. I don't think the bills have ever won an overtime game with Josh Allen. I don't, <laughs> Oof! <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a true fact. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, tough. tough. You might might not quote me on that, but I mean it's pretty fucking close. Also, the Bears and Lions were legendary yesterday. Yeah. I hate to yeah. say a Bears Lions game was legendary, but the Bears <laughs> had six penalties for 69 yards. The Lions had four for 20. Six, nine, Ooh. four, 20. They did the funny numbers. 
<laughs> Legendary. Rick. Maybe. Dude, I'm so over listening to all these people talk about Caleb Williams. You know, the guy who I've said and will continue to say is like maybe the best quarterback prospect we've ever seen. I, You're not swaying me from that. Yeah, he had a not so great year this year. I, I don't care. I, nothing's mm-hmm. changed for me. But the amount of people who are like bashing him because of a report from Mike Florio, the guy known for making things up. He was the only guy to report on this who said, you know, Caleb Williams wants an ownership stake in whatever team drafts him. And there goes your fantasy season. Uh, yep. But like yep. Florio being the only idiot to report it and then having it shared by Dove Kleiman does not make it real. Um, but so people hate Caleb Williams for that. Caleb Williams has now been misquoted from last year when Max Dugan was crying after the one game because somebody was like Dugan showing so much heart and whatever because he was crying after the game and Caleb Williams just replied to it like quote tweeted it with just lol (laughs) because you know two weeks before that people were making fun of Caleb Williams for crying after a loss Mm -hmm. so he's he wasn't lulling at the fact that dude was crying. He was lulling at the fact that you guys have this wild double standard that Dugan shows a lot of heart and Caleb Williams is a whiny, emotional brat. Like it's the same fucking thing. So this year, the loss that knocks him out of the playoffs, he cries and people judge him. And then he goes and hugs his mother after the game. And people are like, nah, emotionally immature. Can't draft him first overall. Because he cried and then hugged his mom. I don't know. Maybe this is from a point of, you know, confusion because I don't have a mom. I don't really see a problem with hugging your mom. I, you know, that'd be a pretty cool thing to be able to do, I'm sure. Um, I'm saying, not I hug my mom after every game, so. I'm not going to judge people for hugging their parents. But maybe that's just because I didn't have any, so I don't really have any experience on the situation. Uh, <laughs> well, you didn't know that if you hugged your parents and had a good relationship with them, you're a bitch. <laughs> no, sick. Um, then this week, Caleb Williams declines to speak with the media after another loss, and now he's getting clowned again for being immature. It's like. So he speaks his mind and you're mad. He doesn't speak with the media and you're mad. He hugs his mom and you're mad. He cures cancer and you're mad. Why do you hate Caleb Williams? I don't understand what this kid ever did. Is it just because he paints fuck onto his fingernails? Like fuck whatever team he's playing before every game? Because I think that's fucking hilarious. (laughs) Like this game, it was fuck UCLA. He's done that his whole career. I think that's funny. I don't know. Whatever. Ugh. It's ridiculous, and I'm mad. Yeah. I just like to be mad. True, I do like to be mad. It's a fun time. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a fun time. It's a fun time. It's a fun time. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we know? Trying to check some stuff. We're like, cl- oh, I want the world to never forget that the top 100 players of last year, as voted on by the players, had Mac Jones rated higher than Kirk Cousins. I just need this to be known for any time anyone says, I respect the NFL player's opinion over yours. NFL player's fucking stupid. Or biased as shit. Sure, am I biased too? Probably. I'm not going to lie. I'll probably speak with some bias here and there. Do my best to not be, though. I struggle really hard, not even when it comes to the Vikings. I'm normally pretty clear-eyed on them. Uh, Normally, it's the, you know, Broncos, Packers, Saints, where my vision's clouded with just Mm -hmm. hatred. (laughs) The Broncos added to the hatred by uh, having Sean Payton as a coach. Oh, God, poor Grayson. (laughs) <laughs> I love the little <laughs> clip he pulled from Run the North. Because Jake's like, I was having this interaction with a casual fan, and I just go, Grayson. And it cuts to just some guy going, 
the fuck did I do? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that's <True>. fair. <laughs> that was great, son. Uh, but that was pretty classic. <laughs> oh, God, good times. I'm depressed. Apparently, Knights of the Old Republic, the remake, is not happening. Apparently, oh. it's dead in the water, and I'm very sad. <sighs> oh, the fucking tournament last weekend. Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah, how'd that go? Oh, not good. So, first game. Um, get into a fight in Tilted. So, it's no builds, which I already hate. Mm-hmm. Sure, there are probably people way better than me at builds, but, like, for this situation, it pissed me off. So, I'm trying to fight this team on top of this building. And I jump. I notice there's a problem when my first shot fires, hits dude directly in the head and does no damage. And I go, uh, what? So I jump up, fire a shot, and then fall off the building because I lagged. Because they were all on NA East servers, which isn't the most ideal. Mm -hmm. Then the server or the the tournament wasn't set up the way I figured it would be. So I figured it would be set up kind of like how um, Friday Fortnite used to be. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to go find the exact rules. Um Yeah, if it was no builds, man, you should have me there. Which yeah, well, I wish I would have known cause... No, so the reason I didn't invite you and I'm going to be honest is I thought this was the Friday Fortnite rules. The way it sounded was like it was going to be these rules, which the rules were two players, so like me and you, we form a two-person squad. Mm-hmm. Then the team we're going against, let's say Jedi and Eero, form this other squad. We jump into a squads game as a full four-man squad. Mm-hmm. Right? Then we just play a standard squad game. The team with the most kills wins the round and moves on to the next bit. That's how I thought that was going to go. So my theory, and I told Artie this when I invited her, was to get Artie to lower my skill-based matchmaking so I could win it. Mm-hmm. That was my thought process. Does that make me a dick? I don't fucking maybe. But I also, in that same context, I knew if it was me and you, we'd be fucked because our skill based matchmaking is ridiculous. I don't know why it thinks we're so good at Fortnite, but when we it, definitely. <laughs> when it turned out that it was all custom lot, like private lobbies, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still fun. Me and Artie had a good time. Didn't finish last, which I'm shocked by. So W, uh, especially with. So yeah, the first game I lagged off a building, died. Second game, got a couple of kills, uh, lost a fight that we definitely should have won. Whatever. Third game, Artie's computer crashes in the middle of a fight, and we oh. die, and that's it. And then fourth game, we get killed basically as we land. It was tough. Mm. Uh, So it just wasn't great. Um, So, yeah. Um, But lag and then computer crash uh, murdered what could have been, you know? Right. Um, So, yeah. It would have been a lot better anyway. I kind of want... I kind of want to set up my own tournament and do it like a true Friday fortnight, like set it up for January during the subathon, mm-hmm. like mid subathon. We do a, we do a big tournament, just try to get as many people into it as we can. Right. <clears throat> I think it'd be sick. Yeah. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Dude. Some of the teams back on Friday fortnight were fucking incredible. <laughs> Because we had Ninja oh, and PewDiePie God. as a team at one point. <laughs> PewDiePie just, oh my God, Mahomes. His Dude. receivers are so bad. <laughs> so bad. No, I get it's rainy, but fuck. Mahomes, look at him. He's like, God, bro, come on. <laughs> Take them stupid gloves off and catch them with your bare hands. I wish I could see the bracket. 
actually, with the rain the way it is, uh, you might want to take the fucking gloves off. That's what I'm saying. Take them off. When it was wet like that, I took my gloves off. Yeah, on an average day, gloves are great. But, like... When it's wet, those gloves become, like, buttery, slimy, and you're not holding on to nothing. Hey, it went right back to him, though. Uh-huh. You got to keep the confidence. Yeah. But. Yeah, so basically it would just be teams of two and then join squads and then just try to get kills. That would be the bracket system. Yeah. But I don't know. People don't like it. Yeah. Apparently. But yeah, they had like, they got like pro players and content creators and like whatever to join Friday Fortnite. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. I used to fucking binge watch that shit. Yeah, I uh that's tough. That that play was tough. Yeah. Like what what's the guy supposed to do? He didn't snap right. the ball yet, but he's on the wrong side because hurry up, that's tough. But yeah. To be fair, it was like almost always pro players that won mm-hmm. Friday Fortnite, but it was okay. Cause it was just Like, the interesting matchups, because you'd get squads that were just, like, the entire world of Fortnite. Or just, like, the entire world just teamed up. Like I said, you had Ninja and PewDiePie teamed together one time. It's like, what the fuck is that, bro? (laughs) (laughs) That's some bullshit. Mr. Beast played in it at least once. Um... Face High Sky, who I sniped that one time. Mm-hmm. That's the clip I used to like really prove to people like, no, my skill based matchmaking is stupid. Here's the lobbies I'm in with pro players, dude. Like, there's a reason I don't grind Fortnite the way I used to, because I'm not the player I used to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, it's bad. It's a bad line. Ugh. Ridiculous. Hmm. Nicholas, ridiculous. 17 7 Chiefs at half. That's tough. Mm-hmm. Jason Kelsey's going to retire at halftime. I wouldn't blame him. Like, uh, beat, like, even, no, no, even receiver. if we get back to the, even if we get back to the Super Bowl, we aren't beating the Chiefs. All right, I'm done. Nothing <laughs> we can do. Can I join the Chiefs and play with my brother? Right. Is it too late for a trade? Oh. Oh, Justin Simmons, that's maybe not your best look. How are you supposed to stop him from getting there? So, Justin Simmons, the other Broncos safety. Dobbs mm-hmm. on this play was lined up at running back. The tight end was under center, snapped the ball, tossed it to Dobbs, who isn't defenseless, except he was, on a third and one when you're fighting for every yard. How are we supposed to stop a runner from falling forward? It's not about not hitting them hard. Do not drop your head and drive the crown of your helmet into his helmet. It's really actually not that hard. Like, I don't yeah. care that you're an NFL player you and you're trying to defend your team. Right here. You're a moron. All of this you can use. That's legal. This, not legal. This, legal. This, no, no. This, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Ridiculous, dude. Because that's going to have more people questioning all of the hits and the rules, and it's just ridiculous. Ugh. I hate it. I hate it here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't like that. So, Twitch streamer X. I hate using that word, but like things that make you feel weird and uncomfy as a streamer or as mm-hmm. a viewer watching streamers. I don't know. Saying it's been a while as a thing making you feel awful is weird. It just means haven't seen you in a bit. It's been a while. I don't know who's using it's been a while with like malicious intent or like you're never around my streams anymore, man. Or where, where you been? It's just like, yo, it's been a minute. How you doing? I don't I don't get it. Hmm. I don't know. 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 But, oof. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Uh, The thing is, the NFL really needs to convince their Mm -hmm. officials. I think what the NFL PA should argue for, since the NFL wants to argue this, like, hits to the head thing, is all about safety. Stop letting it be a thing where you just find them after the game, but don't actually call the penalty. That is a penalty. Make it a monetary thing for the NFL. You cannot find them. You can suspend them, but you cannot find them, which is all the NFL really cares about. Cause it's a revenue thing. You mm-hmm. cannot find a player for that. If you don't penalize it, therefore the NFL pushes the refs to throw the fucking flag and do their fucking job. If you want it to actually be about player safety, Because it should not be where the team just gets away with it and then the player suffers for it later. Because I don't care. that that, That's not... What's the incentive there? The team might just cover the fine for him. Mm -hmm. Fuck, Sean Payton's probably covering the fine for him. (laughs) Let's be honest. They're probably making money under Sean Payton for making those bids. I love C.J. Stroud. (laughs) <laughs> CJ Stroud when asked about his three interception game Steph Curry don't ever stop shooting so I'm gonna keep letting it fly that's incredible I love CJ Stroud he should be a Viking I yelled about it all off season trade up <laughs> give him whatever you gotta give him get the fuck up to the first overall pick I don't care <sighs> and I was right cause CJ Stroud is fucking insane dude At this point, I don't think it's just like rookie of the year MVP conversations. I'm ready to have the top five quarterback conversation with a dude 10 games into his career. I don't care. Mm -hmm. He's doing shit that like ain't nobody else doing. It's incredible. Uh, That I disagree with, Jeff. Caleb Williams' red flags feel an awful likely, awful lot like C.J. Stroud's red flags. No, C.J. Stroud's red flags were immobile, uh, O-line and wide receiver merchant at, you know, the college that's known for producing O-linemen and wide receivers. And, you know, he was aloof and never really seemed to be a leader. Whereas Caleb's being just called a crybaby. And I guess he bails too early on plays, you know, behind a bad offensive line with mediocre weapons. He bails too early on the play. It's like, well, oh, my right tackle's beat. I'm going to go this way. (laughs) That's a problem, apparently. Incredible. I just love being right about having um, 
CJ Stroud as my QB1. I got bullied for it, but I was right. So, that's what I know. Mm-hmm. I know nothing, Jon Snow. True. All right. Well, I don't know what else we got. You got anything? I feel like I talked most of this episode and you just kind of sat there and I apologize. I contributed a little. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That's tough. Our Twitters have been like minimized the entire time. Like you can barely tell what they, or you couldn't tell what they were. I'll expand them now. So you haven't been getting any credit this episode. I forgot. I, I basically didn't credit you all episode, but I also didn't credit myself. So no, cheers. No, you oh, know, well. it was all fair, you know, it was all in fairness. Um, in fairness to me. Uh, whatever. It'll work for now. They're back. Kind of. But all right, I think that'll do it for us. Uh, Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.